Tuesday. How are you? Hi, thank you for joining. Happy Tuesday. How are you? So good to see you again. See him here. Let's give him a couple more minutes. I hope the same for you. And you know already, you are gorgeous. Thank you for joining me. How's life treating you guys? Still don't see my guests. <laughs> So, in the meantime, there we go. There he is. I see him now. Okay, guys. So, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So, thank you guys for joining me. Um, that's amazing. I'm so glad. It's so good to see you on here. Thank you for joining. Um, so, welcome to Real Talk Tuesday, where I am your host, Joe. Um, so, first of all, I have to say a big thank you to Tanisha, who was on um, two weeks ago. Thank you so much for joining us here on Real Talk Tuesday and definitely being a light um, that shines so bright. If you guys missed that show, please go to my IGTV and catch that show. It will be up on YouTube soon, um, so you can also check it there. If this is your first time... Uh, joining the show, thank you. If you are a return person that comes to my show every other 
week. Thank you again for joining. And if so, if you're sharing it and telling people about the show, thank you. I know I have a lot of people that watch after I go live. So I also want to say thank you guys to all of my rewatchers. Um, I'm so grateful for everybody and just, you know, having this platform. So if you are an entrepreneur or you're just somebody who's amazing and who's shining their light here on earth, please, please, please let me know who you are. If you have a business and you would like for me to shout you out, you would like for me to get to know um, what you do in your products, please let me know. I would love to have you on the show. So this show is based off of Matthew 5, 14 through 16, which says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So this is what this platform is all about. And I'm just so thankful to have someone coming on the show who is definitely that person and who is definitely a light in this world. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to add. Dev, how are you? Okay. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm always good. good about yourself. It's so long. Man, how are you doing? I'm so excited about this and I can't wait to get to know what's up in your world, what you got going. Oh, look at all your friends and family joining. Hopping on. Yes, Everybody thank you guys for joining. So, Devin, are you ready? If you're ready, I'm ready. Well, first, let me let me kick off. Just want to tell you, thank you for um, the opportunity to be on your show. Um, I definitely admire what you're doing. I think it's important that we all follow our passions. And as we follow our passions, we find our purpose. So appreciate you giving me this opportunity to share my purpose. Absolutely, with, with Deb. You. you know, we go way back and you yeah. are definitely someone who I'm just super yeah. proud of. Um, you're married, you're living life, you are following your dreams, you have a lot going on. So I cannot yeah. wait to tap in and get to know more, catch up, you know, and, and let these people see what you're doing and what you have going on. So let's start off with what's your name and where you're from. My name is Devin Watts, and I am from Carrollton, Georgia. Yes. I'm a, I'm a true country boy. Yes. Okay. Southern boy. Definitely. So, guys, if you don't know, I, I am from an area close to Carrollton, so I'm de I definitely know Devin from back in the day. So, we kind of grown up together. So, to see him now is just amazing to see all the accomplishments that you've done. So, again, I'm so proud of you, and I can't wait. To get to know more so um what developed your passion for cars and who inspired you Devin? i gotta i gotta give that credit to my pops um racing and cars just is that's that's something that's in us you know it's really not even on us that's yeah. really that that's something that lives in us as a kid my dad my dad had a 69 camaro and wow. he really ran the streets around here. Like he, he had a 69 Camaro. It was the fastest, it was the cleanest. And then he also at the same time had a 72 Nova that he had specifically for the racetracks. So I grew up in the car shows, car scene, and then also grew up at the racetracks. So as a, you know, seven, eight years old, the same age Mason is right now, I was in the car seat with my dad sitting on top of his wow. nature's bottle going to the starting line. So. As a kid, I've always from 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 the beginning to now, I've always been the one at Amazing. the racetracks at the car That series. is such a blessing to be able to do that. And also, you're creating the same with Mason, so that is beautiful. Yeah, and and it's funny as a as a kid, my dad had a sticker on the back of his car, and that's really where this all started from. My dad had a sticker on the back of his car and said, "Watch racing, wow. we bring the power." 
So seeing that, that that was really what stood and brought up. Amazing. I love it. Look at all the love in the comments, Deb. Are you seeing it? Oh, yes. Um, yeah. So what do you love so much about um, Grand Nationals? And, and what year is your Grand National? So if you don't know what that is, guys, I recently learned what that is. Uh, it's the car Devin has. Um, so what do you love so much about Grand Nationals and what year is yours? So I have a, I have a 1987 and all we worked on with my business is 1986 and 1987, Buick Grand Nationals. That's we don't it. work on nothing else. So. What what is it for me? Um, it's the it's the value and the rarity for me. Um, the fact that these cars hold their value. If they ever lost their value, then they would lose my interest. Um, I'm really big on on investments. I, I preach and teach financial literacy to my customers, making sure that we're making a good financial decision going forward with their project. And so, these cars are very 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 valuable and. Um, that's kind of the reason why I switched. I don't know if you remember that Monte yes, Carlo that I had, I you know, that black car I had. So, I, so when I I had a lot of money in that car, and when it came time to sell it, I didn't even get half of my money back. And so I knew, yeah, and, and it's because of the value in them. Um, these Grand Nationals, they're holding their value, and in fact, they're they're creating value by the day. So I bought my car back six years ago for nineteen thousand five hundred. Today, I multiply that by a lot on what it's worth today. So, so these cars are. I mean, there's not a, there's not a, there's not a rapper out there not talking about these cars. There's not an athlete that doesn't have these cars. They're really a hot commodity right now, and that's why I'm number one interested in them. And then number two, I mean, they're they're badass. They're nice. Um, they're, they're some of the fastest cars out there. They're special. They're they're a rarity and they're unique. And so. Seeing all of those things come combined and intertwined in one. I love that's that. Wow. Stuck with. That's amazing. I knew it had to have something to do with like that with you because you are very Deb, I know you're yeah. not gonna do nothing unless it has value. So <laughs> I I figured it yeah, was something yeah, along yeah. those lines. So that's amazing. Amazing. So could you tell us a breakdown of your car and what you think makes your car stand out from others? So I'll start with that that second part, what makes it stand out. Um, I think I know what it is. It's, it's, the, it's the fact that it's versatile, meaning that I can I can literally say, okay, hey, I want to go to a car show on Saturday. So on Monday, I'll break the car all the way down, clean everything up. And on Saturday, I can literally drive my car to that car show, win the car show. And then after the car show, I say, hey, let's go to a race. Go to a race, win the race. Then the next day, Sunday, wipe it down again, and we can go on date night. So it's just versatile. It's something that we can, I built it in a way that I can have fun with it. So it's got the show and the go with it. And so when you create something special like that, you can actually really enjoy yourself and have a special, unique ride. And so that's that's something that I love about my car. I really made it in a way that it's versatile and I can truly drive it on the street and go to the racetrack with it and perform well. There's not too many cars that you can really go do all three with. And so that's something that makes it makes it special. Um, a breakdown of it, I keep it simple um, for for time's sake because joe i could talk about that all day about every i mean i've got six years of yeah. six years of work in the car so so to, so to keep it simple um i've rebuilt the engine in a way that it makes maximum horsepower that it can make and i've got all the latest technology when it comes to performance parts that are in it new turbo um new exhaust system transmission I've, fun fact i've blown up about eight transmissions and I've blown up about six engines Are to get to this serious? point. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I've, 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 I've failed a lot. I failed a lot to get to this point. Um, and that's why, that's why my trust, my customers trust me because I can take them around all the bullshit. I can teach them what they need to do the first time around. That way they don't have to spend 
an extra eighty thousand dollars in in failures when we can just do I love right that you said time. that though, but I think that comes with a lot of entrepreneurs, people who are striving to be better. You have to yeah. fail. I feel like a lot of people just think you just can yeah. do it like that overnight, and that's just not. You know that's just not the way it goes so i love that you said like you failed so yeah. many times you, you know? yeah 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 and, and still yeah. and still fail um but when we fail this it's it's a learning it's a learning opportunity it's a opportunity for us to get better and it's a point for our team to really come together and figure out how we're going to overcome this battle um we we really asked for these bigger problems because that means a bigger solution and a bigger win. So we we embrace our failures and we really look at every opportunity to get better. Yeah, so Deb, we, I'm still so proud of you. Still. I'm so proud of you. So what was your first car that you ever worked on and what is your dream car that you would like to work on and why? Uh, my first car, it was a 95 <laughs> Honda Accord, and when I got my Honda Accord, <laughs> y'all can't tell me nothing. <laughs> I thought I was the man with my 95 Accord because I came from walking in the street. I remember I remember walking to the bank. I didn't even have a car. I was working at Sony Music at the time, um, packaging up PlayStations, and I didn't have a car. And so earning, earning my first car yeah. meant a lot to me, and I took care of it. And I did my own mechanical stuff, and I sucked. So thank God for Chris Fix It. I don't know if you all have ever watched Chris Fix, Chris Fix on YouTube, but he taught me a lot. You know, he taught me on how to how to fix some small issues that I had. But really, I didn't I didn't learn how to work on cars until I got this car that I have now. This car I taught me it. everything that I know. And your, what, was your, what was your second question? Um, Hold on. What is your dream car that you would like to work on, and why? Um, I don't yeah. want to work on anything but Grand Nationals. That's it. That's it. I don't. I don't have a. My, my, my wife has a Toyota Camry, and it <laughs> needs maintenance. It goes to Toyota. Or my or my truck yeah. needs maintenance. It goes to the dealership. You know, I just. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't get into all of that stuff. I only work on Grand Nationals. Wow. That's, that's it. Oh, okay. Then. My mom, if my mom, if my mom listening, if you need some help on your car, mom. Take, a damn answer right there. Okay. So, um, we're just gonna skip that because I already know you only are about Grand Nationals. So, what would be the key starting point in building a nice car? Like, if somebody wanted to get in this business, like, what advice could you give them of how they can start? Um, I'll give you a real life scenario on what my customers do and how we kind of run our business. So all of all of my customers that want one of these cars and want to go faster, we start with a consultation. Um, I literally go out. These cars are very specialized. These cars are very unique. These cars are 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 a rarity. So if if someone has one of these cars or wants to purchase one, I go fly out to them and have a conversation with them. You know, I really look at that car that they have right now. So there's there's two things. They have their, their current car that they have, and then they have their dream of what they want it to be. In the middle, there's a gap. There's a gap, and there's a lot yeah. of money between where you're at and where you want to go. So I help my clients make, make it make sense. We make the math work. We look at, really, hey, buddy, you want, you want this right here? Okay, here's every single thing that you need, and I call that a GSP, a Guaranteed Success Plan. So I create them a customized guaranteed success plan. They'll purchase every single part. Well, basically they'll give me the money to purchase all of those parts. And then once I have all of those, once we have all the parts, I'll ship them directly to the customer. And then once they have all their parts in hand, then I'll put them on my schedule to install the parts. So it's a process. And it's funny, I actually came up with this process because mm -hmm. my wife, she got sick last year. And before, I created this process. I was bringing cars to me, didn't have the parts, waiting on the parts. It was just taking too long. It was taking a year to do something that could really do, that I could really complete in three weeks. So the doctor told my wife, 
hey, you need to do a consultation with me first. You can't just bring your sick body to me before we do this consultation. I said, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. Let me, let me slow down and do the consultation first. Reach out to my customers and see what's going on. That way I can diagnose the issues. And then, and then after the doctor saw my wife, he told us two weeks later to come. So if you're still alive in two weeks, then you can do your procedure. <laughs> so anyway, the procedures got done and uh, she was able to have her surgery and then she was good from there. But it really opened my eyes on how I'm going to operate my business going forward. And it's really in a structured manner that when your car does come to me, it gets full attention and I can focus and give it the attention that it that it truly Absolutely. needs. Absolutely. So, you know, I definitely just got my car fixed um, and I'm still waiting on parts. So, you know, with COVID, like things yeah, are backed yeah. up. So has it been like that with the parts you're like trying to get? It takes yeah. a long time. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I had, I had every intention when I started my business, I had every intention of solely doing e-commerce. Yeah. I only wanted to sell parts. Um, that, that was my vision. I wanted to do a little bit of services here and there, but I knew the flexibility in my life that I wanted. I wanted to do an e-commerce platform. Well, I started it at the heart of COVID. So I really started my business at the worst time for for that portion of the services that I wanted to offer. Because our supply chain for our car is the worst. Yeah, it's really it's really limited. We've are, we've always had limited manufacturers for our parts, but now um we're we're at a point where we're in survival yeah. mode trying to get these parts. Um I get a phone call every day, somebody asking me for a camshaft. Um, if you're listening, I don't have no camshafts, bro. I don't have, <laughs> I don't have any camshafts, but it's, it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's starting to get better, but definitely COVID, COVID did uh, impact I, our supply oh, wow. chain. Yeah, because my part is still not here. And it's been like a month and a half. And I have a Honda Accord. So, you know, I can only imagine. Okay. I can yes, so you can imagine. You can yeah. imagine what a what a classic car would how difficult it would be to get apart from here and there. Absolutely. So it's, it's tough. So speaking of that, where do you see Watts performance in the near future? And do you see yourself ever creating a type? We kind of like discuss that apart where you want to sell like eventually. So so fun fact, um, I started Watts Performance Solutions as a corporation meaning that i always knew watts performance solutions was going to have llc's under it and those llc from the foundation of watts performance solution mm -hmm. so i'm always going to be whatever i do if i decide to sell lemonade it'll be a watts performance solution yeah. um, <laughs> um, but i do i do want to sell parts it won't i think the grand national and what i'm learning in this business um it'll always be something that i do but i definitely foresee myself having other product lines um nice. and it won't be grand national specific but it'll always be a core of me to work on grand national and to serve this grand national turbo Buick community um i think it's a lifestyle that's something that i love so i always have that but as far as parts um i'm developing parts right now uh, the difference is, is the, yeah, thank you. The, the, the thing is getting it scaled where it's perfect for all users and not yeah. just me and my project. So it's, we're, we're, we're developing parts right now. Um, nice. And I also have some, some projects going on right now that's, that's outside of the Turbo Buick community, but definitely creating parts. I think it's important that I create something um, yeah. and make people's lives easier, make solutions. Um, because you say, you, you say a lot of cuss words when you when you're working with these cars so my goal is to make life easier for everybody that's that owns one of these cars and where they want to go with these cars that's a, so amazing Deb. oh my gosh so speaking of, about these electric cars because i know like already they've already passed something in california where you know about the electric car thing i feel like it might, you know, eventually spill out of California, eventually, yep. how things yep. are going, gas, you know, so how do you feel about electric cars? 
um, in regards to like how it could impact my business? Yes, or just period, like. Well, let's. I mean, to be honest, we we can't we can't let our ego ignore the facts. Mm -hmm. um, electric cars are becoming a thing. Oh, electric cars are a thing. Yeah. And um, it's it's happening in twenty thirty one. The last gas powered vehicle is done after twenty thirty one. Yeah. So what does that mean for turbo Buicks? Um, my honest opinion, absolutely nothing, because they are iconic. They are legendary. They're always going to be in existence. And when you take when you take value and desire, like these cars are going to continue to always be valuable cars, regardless of what laws pass. I don't I don't see these cars falling away. Um, we're still going to have limited supply chain, regardless of what happens. But I do foresee electric cars being a thing, but I don't see the classic cars completely going away. I don't know what's going to happen, um, but as far as my business, um, we just have to pivot as necessary, whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever that means. If we have to create another LLC so we can remain profitable, hey, we're going to stay in the automotive industry. But yeah. as, far as, the core of, as far as the core of what happens in the future, I don't know. I'm just, I'm taking it all in today. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So um, tell us what are all the services that Watts Performance offer? Um, we, we build customized horsepower packages for 1986 and 1987 Buick Grand Nationals. Um, and basically, these cars come with an ego. They were the fastest cars in the 80s. So when you think about a fast car, you think about a Lamborghini, a Porsche, yeah. Uh, and so the fact that Buick was able to beat those cars back in the 80s, that's what made these things legendary. So yeah. fast forward to today, if you own a Grand National, your ego naturally wants to be everything out there on the streets. So most of my clients, every one of my clients that owns one of these cars, they want to be able to keep up with modern horsepower cars. They don't have to be the fastest, but they definitely want to be able to keep up yeah. with the greatest technology that's out there. And yeah. so that's what I do. Um, and then we also we also are partnered with some of the best painters in the world. So if people want to get paint jobs, if people want to get any type of upgrade, whether it's interior or body or performance, we specifically focus on the performance aspect of it. But yeah. that's uh, that's what we do. We focus on the performance aspect of it. Yes. Okay. So, what next car do you have your eye on, Deb, to purchase? Oh, um, you know, I, I'm a car guy. <laughs> so, for me being a car guy, I already, I've already manifested in believing in the cars that's coming my way. I know. That's what I want to know. <laughs> I want to know what's next for Deb. Yeah. I, want, I don't know what kind of guy you are. Everything is planned. Yeah. Everything is already laid out. So yeah. tell us, what's next? I I really, I want a modern car next. Okay. I've always had old school. Okay. Um, so for me, what I want is a 2018 Porsche 911. Okay. I want the G2. Porsche. Yeah, I want the G2, GT2 RS package. So the funny thing about that particular package is it's one of the most powerful packages that Porsche makes. And then on top of that, it comes with a 3.8 liter V6 turbocharged engine, just like the Grand National. So it's almost the same yeah. engine platform as the Grand National engine. And I've already drove the car and ridden in the car. And it is, it is mind blowing how fast it is from the factory. Yeah. So speaking of that, have you went to the Porsche experience? I have um, not. I have not. I know a friend that's going, and I know one that has went, and they were like, it's amazing. And I definitely thought about you. I was like, I'm sure Devin yeah. probably been. Yeah, I've, I've never gone, and I see when I come into work, um, I actually see that Porsche sign every single day. So I'm like, man, I, I want to do that. So <laughs> I was to Reggie when I went out to Vegas last time. Reggie lives out there in Vegas now. Um, oh. I'll tell you. Man, we need to we need to go out there and and drive whatever our next car is gonna be, yeah. and definitely 
that car was out there. So next time I go out there to Vegas, I'm gonna definitely take advantage of that Porsche experience they got out there. Yes, sir. Speaking into existence, okay. <laughs> so what next event will Watts Performance be attending? And do you see yourself ever hosting an event in the near future? Absolutely. Um, I'm sure there'll be some type of race event coming up. I don't I don't have anything on the calendar for the remainder of 2022. Okay. But, but the next event that matters the most to me is going to be an open house. Um, I'm in the middle of designing and planning a shop right now. So when when it's done, yeah, I'm I'm super excited because this is this is where all my heart and time yeah. for passion is going to right now. I talked to I talked to Jay Jade and I connect almost every day talking about this but it's just like that's what's next for me is really getting our our shop established that way our customers feel comfortable bringing their projects from from the west coast from australia from wherever these cars may be at i want clients to feel comfortable bringing it so when we do get done with our facility it's going to be nice and i'm looking forward to having our, our open house and i want everybody to come you know, every every grand national owner, I want I want to have a true open house. So um, be on the lookout for that spring twenty twenty three. So you definitely need to hit up um, JJ underscore the magnificent one. He said, "I have to come to Georgia and meet you one day." I'm absolutely go. He's I'm in San Francisco, California. Yeah, so it's a lot of it's a lot of people. I was actually in uh, San Francisco. And um, yeah, to watch performance too. Yeah, yes. I, I, was out, <laughs> I was out there in San Francisco, and I met this guy named Charletto, and um, he was like, "Hey, you that watch performance guy, right?" And I was like, "Yeah, what's?" That? And I was like, "Dang, how you, how you know me, man?" And he was telling me he uh, come to find out we were already friends on IG, and uh, it's a, it's a big community out there in the West Coast, big community out there. And so next time I go out there, definitely connecting with those folks that's out there, and anybody if you're ever out in Atlanta. Come see me. Yes. Go see him, y'all. Yeah. Yes. So how how do you find balance between your corporate job, Dev, yeah. family, and also your passion to work on these cars? Do you ever see yourself leaving your corporate job and fully focusing on your passion and growing Watts performance? Or will you always have a corporate job? I'm so curious to know that. <laughs> what do you I'm think? So, let me let me hear your opinion on that. I'm let me so hear your curious. I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Because right. I feel like you will always have something. I just feel like you will always have something on the side. That's my honest opinion. Okay. I feel that way. But tell us, like, Will you ever leave corporate America? Because you have always been so big about, you know, your job. Like, you're just so focused. But I know you love these cars as well, and you love what you're building. So yeah. you tell us. Tell us, Deb. What, what would you do? Um, I'm going to always be happy. I so, love that answer. Simple as that. So I love that answer. I, that's, that's, that's the bottom line. I'm going to always be happy. And um, the way that I balance happiness right now is by getting some rest. Hello. I put a significant Hi. emphasis on rest. So let's let's talk about math, okay? You know, I'm gonna always math the situation out. So there's 168 hours in a week, right? Absolutely. There, there is a 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's 168 hours a week. So for me, I am gonna sleep and relax. <laughs> and do nothing for half of the day. Yeah. 12 hours out of the day, you will not catch me. I will ignore your phone call. I'm gonna be relaxed for 12 hours a day, okay? And then the other 12 hours, I'm gonna be productive doing something. So for me, that means if I'm gonna be relaxed half of the day, which means half of the week, uh -huh. which means half of the year, which means half of my life, that means that means I got another 84 hours to be productive during the week. Mm -hmm. So right now, 40 hour goes to Google <laughs> and then 20 to 40 hours goes to watch performance. Okay. And then that means four to 20 hours go to my family per week. It's, yeah. it's, really, it's really that simple and breaking it down that way. 
it is difficult to manage because on paper that sounds so simple and yeah. it don't always, it don't always work out like that Absolutely. Um, it doesn't it doesn't always go like that so you constantly have to re-evolve you constantly have to pivot and and always juggling the the scenarios that you didn't plan for but at the end of the day when you're when you're mindful about taking care of yourself one thing i don't juggle I am gonna sleep twelve hours. Well, I'm not sleep, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be relaxed for twelve hours throughout. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've I've started changing a lot about myself and okay. taking care taking care of myself. Um, I didn't always I didn't always take care of myself. But no, now that I, sounds I like it. wait, Riz, you yeah. resting now? <laughs> yeah, I, I I I make sure I take my time and rest because if you don't, you're not gonna be at your best, and if you're not yeah. relaxed. And taking care of yourself and eating good foods, putting good foods in your body, like you can't, you can't perform at a level. You're operating on a dead brain. So I'm, I'm, I'm going into week eleven. This flexitarian diet, I feel phenomenal. I'm at my best right now, um, and it's helping me really. It's really helping me from a mental perspective to be as sharp as I can be. And it takes that if you're going to be doing two different jobs, like you got to eat healthy. Got to. Yes, sir. Can't operate, can't operate if you don't take care of yourself. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly, and I'm trying to do better. I'm, I'm working on it. It's, you look fantastic. It's a process. Whatever you're doing, keep doing, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. <laughs> Thank you, Dev. I'm really trying. It's hard <laughs> out here, you know, for the police, you know, but, you know, God is good. I'm, I'm going to make it through. So how do you feel you impact or shine your light on this world, Dev? From your mouth. Um, I mean, I just, I'm just truly myself. You are. And that alone, I think, is the biggest impact on earth. Because a lot of people are so caught up in pleasing other people. Yeah. Um, what other people got to think. Mm-hmm when you truly speak and be yourself that that right there is a light for people to see who they are yeah. and see the gifts and talents they have and when you're when you're being instead of doing when you're actually being yourself <laughs> instead of true. doing yourself like be yourself and you can actually see what you can become so yeah. i think that that's my my light and that's something that i i truly stand by so I truly try to be myself every single day, and I'm very unbothered right now. <laughs> so unbothered right now <laughs> because oh I'm I'm happy and I'm doing and I'm doing me. I'm living my dream and doing. Yes, do yeah. you, friend? I yeah. do you, okay. And doing you looks good on you. It yeah. looks like you are just so truly happy, and yeah. I know everybody else sees that. Um, around your family, your friends, you know, so we're all just proud. So but it, it takes it takes work, though. It doesn't, it doesn't just sir. happen. Like that. It, I wasn't like this six months ago. Catch me six months ago and I wouldn't. I had big bags under my eyes, you know, but it just you have to you have to actually live that lifestyle and, and stay prayed up and stay with your vision that you have for your life. Because Absolutely. when crowds come, everybody wants to give up. Yeah. You know? yeah. I give up. I give up all the time, but it's my circle of accountability that keeps me going. Got to have a circle. Got to have a good. You have to have a good circle. Yeah. I mean, yes. So, what do you want to be remembered by? That's our last question. Um. Remembered by, like as as a as when I leave this earth. Yeah. What oh, do you want people to know about Dev or remember about Dev? Um. I think kind of piggybacking off of what we just said, like I, I really, I'm a, I'm a guy that, that truly believes in God and truly believe that my passions were going to be followed regardless of what it may seem like I'm in at the situation. Like if, if, if there's something that I want to do, I'm going for it regardless of anything. Yes. That's that's something to remember me about. And that is definitely something you have always done. Yeah. Like me knowing you, you have all whatever you say you're going to do, you normally hit it. Like yeah. 
you you go after it like a thousand percent and that's something that i feel like a lot of us respect so much about you um so kudos to that dev i'm just i'm overwhelmed i'm just so happy for you i keep saying like i honestly am like truly so please tell us where we can go to follow you follow what's going on to get your parts eventually please tell everybody your handles where we need to come where's the shop located give it all out so um as far as content the best the best way to keep up with my content is going to be through the website so watchperformance.com that's really where you can find out what's going on. Um, I've started to slow down social media. Social media has a lot of noise, but uh-huh. where the actual activity happens is through emails. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, social media is fun and it's a great way to connect with people. But my average clientele that I have for my business is 45 to 65. So uh-huh. most 65 year olds ain't no algae. <laughs> so so I you can find a lot of my content on YouTube. Okay. And that's typically where most people find me at. So if you go on YouTube and look up Watch Performance Solutions, you can find our latest videos. That's where we typically upload any type of information, any racing events, any awards that we have. That's that's all that stuff can be captured on watchperformance.com or and or watch performance solutions. Any like project updates like I do all of my like small detailed project updates on the Watts Performance Facebook page. Okay. And Instagram, we just have fun on that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So last part of the show and we are done, Deb. Okay. I usually give everybody a word, right? So you, I'm going to give you a word and I want you to be just completely honest about it. However you feel about it. How. Okay next to you you know maybe what it means to you however you want to do it okay the word is multitasking how that word connects with me um the first automatic thing that pops up to me is flexibility mm-hmm. you have to be flexible yes with that piece of paper and that pen for instance yesterday I woke up, I read my book, prayed, and wrote down everything that I was going to do. And guess what? I got done with every single thing that I was going to do. Wow. Now, um, Friday, I did the same thing. And I didn't get done with anything that I wrote down. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. You just have to to pivot. You have to pivot and don't beat yourself up when things don't go as planned. No, that's good. If, if you plan on multitasking, you got to be flexible and your ability to yeah. pivot, you have to be agile. So multitasking requires agility, which requires being able to stop and go and use those gears Absolutely. that are in. We got gears and I'll leave on this like if you think about a mountain bike, it's got hella gears on it. Mm-hmm. All right? And you got to be able to go up that hill if you got if you're going up the hill, why you got it on ten? Put it on one so you can get up that hill easily. And multitasking requires you to use all of your gears that you have inside of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was poetic, right? That was just <laughs> amazing. I something that would come out of your mouth, like most poetic. definitely. <laughs> most definitely. That is definitely dev all over it. So thank you again. For being on the show, I'm so, so proud of you. I keep saying it because it's so true. Um, You and your family, your friends, like what you got going. I see you traveling, racing. You know, you're about to get a new car soon, it sounds like. it's coming. (laughs) You know, so, yeah, I'm just so proud. And I, I hope God continues to bless you and your family and your business and i'm always in y'all's corner um you know if you ever need me i'm always here and guys please go follow deb right now at watch performance right watch 
yeah. on Instagram. Also follow on YouTube, Facebook. Um, and guys, just support this business. If you love cars, support this man and his business because it's definitely taking off. And I know you're going to do do and continue doing great things. So on, on the flip side, anybody that's that's following me and I appreciate all of my supporters. Um, Joe, I got some diehard people that support the business. I and see. They they are like really, really some great people, like fantastic people. So if you're following me, make sure you do the same thing for Joanna's business. Real Talk Tuesday is is a phenomenal platform. I only I only see it growing. Um, what you're doing is is great, and I'm proud of you as well for everything that you're doing. I mean, you could have. Quit a, you could have quit a long time ago, but you're still doing this, and what you're doing is is something great. So I wanna I wanna definitely tell you, I admire seeing you continue pressing forward. There's a million other things you could be doing with your life right now, yeah. besides doing this on a weekly basis. So keep pouring into it. Um, don't even worry about don't even worry about the the time that you're putting into it. Like whatever you're trying to get will come with time. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, don't make me cry. So <laughs> last thing that I'm done, y'all, if you guys want to be uh, participate in the Cozy Giveaway Drive, please hit me up. Let me know if you have any lightly used coats, scarves, gloves, anything like that. Um, we will be downtown Atlanta sometime in January. I'm still getting the date together where we'll be passing these goodies out to homeless um, individuals out there. So if you want to be a part, please just send me a message. Um, if you have product, have, you know, you got a friend that might have some old stuff and, you know, lightly used stuff and you want to give it away, let me know. I will come pick it up. Um, but yes, please be a part of that. And again, Deb, thank you so much. And guys, have a wonderful, wonderful night. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.